In this lecture, we will be looking at uh, stability analysis of exothermic stirred tank. So, our system looks like this. Let us look at a stirred tank. It's got, let's say, a cooling, cooling system. Okay. You have feed coming in. Okay, and products going out. So, feed is V naught, C A naught, and T naught is the temperature. We have um, C A naught become C A T, and let's say V is the outlet flow. Okay, and uh, T C temperature at which the cooling is coming, and uh, the flow of the coolant is considered to be quite large. So, that the T c does not change all that much. So, as far as our analysis is concerned, we will assume it is reasonably the same. There is a stirrer which keeps the fluids well mixed, so that you have a CSTR. So, we write the mole balance. So, our reaction let us say is A goes to B single independent reaction or even if it is A in this form also there is only one independent reaction. So, we do the treatment for the case of one independent reaction say A goes to B. So, the system we consider is A going to B. Okay. So, we have mole balance which is input output plus generation equal to accumulation. Let us say a variable x defined as C A 0 by C A divided by C A 0. This variable x has the meaning of conversion at steady state. The, during the unsteady state, it should be treated as a variable defined by this relationship. So, suppose we say that the volumetric flow is V equal to V naught means what we are saying is if, if V equal to V naught. Okay. This, this equation can be written as V naught C A naught minus V naught C A minus of R 1 V because R A the rate of formation of A is given as minus of 1 times R 1 the rate intensive rate of the reaction A going to be. Okay. So, that this becomes equal to V times d by d t of C A, V is assumed constant, V constant. What are we saying is that the equipment where we conduct the reaction, that volume does not change during the reaction. Okay. So, we can simplify this and write it as minus of tau d x d t equal to x minus of r 1 tau divided by C A 0. Let us just check if this is correctly done. So, if you divide throughout by V 0, this becomes tau that is fine and then uh, C A naught minus of C A divided by C A naught becomes x. So, this x is correct minus r 1 tau by V and uh, C A equal to in, it's fine. It's, the relationship is fine. Okay, so I'll just put it in this form: dx dt equal to minus of x plus r1 tau by C A zero. So this is our equation one. Okay, material balance. So this is the mole balance equation. Okay. Our next equation is the energy balance equation, which, which we will write. The energy balance equation looks like this. We have written it before, so let us V times C P volumetric specific heat D T D T. So the rate of change of temperature. This is volumetric specific heat. Okay. V naught C P. Okay. T naught minus of T plus 
minus of delta h 1 star plus q minus w. We say this is not important okay. and then if you divide throughout by v naught c p, I divide throughout by v naught c p, we get v divided by c p divided by v naught c p d t d t that is the first term equal to t naught minus of t okay, plus r 1 v divided by v naught c p okay, plus q I will denote q as h a times t c minus of t divided by v naught c p. Okay. So, essentially dividing throughout by v naught c p. So, the first term on the left hand side becomes d t d t okay, equal to t naught minus of t okay. and this term h a by v naught c p notice here the h a by v naught c p is dimensionless you can easily check that. So, I will put this as beta t c minus of t plus r 1 uh, sorry r 1 v minus delta I have forgotten the term minus delta h 1 star here. Okay. So, you have r 1 tau and this this I will call it as j 1 where minus delta h 1 star by c p volumetric is j 1 okay, and beta equal to h a by v naught c p. Okay. These are the two. So, our energy balance equation this is the energy balance equation. Okay. We can simplify this further and put it in slightly more uh, convenient form which we will do now. So, what we write this as tau d t d t that is the first term please notice here our first term this is tau d t d t I have not changed this I want to combine this term with the second term. So, I am combining the first and the second term and writing it as 1 plus beta times T c star minus of T plus R 1 tau J 1 where 1 plus beta times T c star equal to T naught plus beta T c. What we have done please notice here please notice here what we have done is we can we see here we cannot see we cannot see very well we cannot see very well what i'm saying here is the following see i'm combining these two terms and writing it as 1 plus beta tc star minus of sorry sorry it's okay i'm combining this two and then writing this as 1 plus beta tc star minus of t where 1 plus beta tc star is equal to t naught plus beta tc so essentially you know putting it in a slightly more convenient form this whole term as 1 plus beta t c star minus of t, okay, where t c star is defined as this by this relationship. The advantage of looking at it like this is that given t naught and beta you know what is t c star. So, this is equation, equation number I have denoted it as 3. All right. So, let us just recall our equation number 1 is this tau d x d t is this our equation number 2 uh, equation number 3 is this essentially our stirred tank is described by these two equations okay equation 3 and equation 1 okay now what happens at steady state at steady state we have tau d t s by d t equal to 0 tau d x s by d t equal to 0 showing that at steady state the value of x at steady state x s value of t s does not change this is what the definition of steady state is all about. Therefore, that must be equal to 1 plus beta times t c star minus of t s plus r 1 s tau j 1 and then d x s d s equal to d t equal to minus x s plus r 1 s tau divided by c a 0. Okay. So, we call this as 5, we call this as 4 showing that the steady state that you will see in our system 
is now described by equations 5 and equation 4. Okay. The unsteady state is described by equation 1 and equation 2. So, that we have already said. So, equation 1 is, is this equation which tells you what is the unsteady state of description and equation 2 uh, equation 3 is this, uh, talks about temperature. So, equation 1 and 3 describe the unsteady state, equation 4 and 5 describe the steady state. Now, by stability what we mean is that the difference between the steady state number or steady state values and the values that is obtained during the unsteady state or during the period when there is some disturbance that x minus of x s and t minus of t s these are the variation changes from the steady state values. We want to understand if there is a disturbance to the process what happens to this difference x minus of x s t minus of t s. In, in, in other words, we want to know whether these disturbances x minus of x s t minus t s whether they would grow and become unbounded uh, so that the process becomes uh, out of control or they are small enough so that it uh, remains within limits that you and I have specified or you also would like to know what is the trajectory of motion of a variation of a disturbance from an initial point of x s and t s. So, various things like this which you would like to know this is what this analysis is all about which we are about to embark upon. So, we have equation 1 and 3 and then equation 4 and 5 describing the steady state and the unsteady state. Now, what happens? Now, to understand this deviation from steady state we what we do is what is called as find you subtract equation equation 1 minus equation 2 and equation uh, 3 minus of equation 5. So, we do 1 minus 2 correct okay. 1 minus 2 is that correct 1 is uh, so 1 minus 4 1 minus 4 and 3 minus 5. So, suppose you do this what we get is d by d t of x minus of x s d by d t of x minus of x s that is equal to minus x minus of x s plus r 1 minus of r 1 s tau by c s 0. Similarly, d by d t of t minus of t s equal to minus 1 plus beta t minus of t s plus r 1 minus of r 1 s multiplied by tau times j 1. Okay. So, what have we done? We have equation 1 and equation 3. Let us just run through this once again. We have equation 1 which is the material balance. Okay. Then we have equation 4. Where is equation 4? We have equation 4 you can see here this equation 4 and this equation 1 you can see both these equations now equations 1 and equation 4. So, you are doing 1 minus 4. So, you get tau times d of x minus of x s minus of x minus of x s and then r 1 minus of r 1 s tau by j c is 0 multiplied. So, 1 minus of 4 essentially talks about d by d t of the deviation x minus of x s. Okay. In the same way if you can look at the other one 1, 1 and 1 and 3 and 5. So, we can look at 3 and 5. See 3 is the unsteady state okay, let us see 3 and 5. What is 3 and 5? You can see here d by d t of temperature and then d by d t of steady state temperature. So, t minus of t s we can do t minus of t s tau times that becomes what 1 plus beta is common you have T c star cancels off t minus of t s with a minus sign. So, that is we will get a t minus of t s the minus sign and then you can see here r 1 j tau and then you have r 1 j tau. So, it will be j times uh, tau multiplied by r 1 minus of r 1 s. Okay. So, this is what uh, we have written here. Okay. So, what we have written is this. So, both these equations is what we have written d minus d, d by d t of x minus of x s d by d t of t minus of t s. So, they represent the deviation from steady state. Okay. So, I will call this equation 6 and equation 7. 
Now, we want to understand what is what happens to x minus of x s with time, what happens to t minus of t s with time. Now, to be able to do this, of course, since we know the initial state, we should be we can solve the unsteady state equations using an appropriate numerical procedure and then find out what happens. But our interest is just to get some criteria by which we can understand the system without having to go through all these mathematical calculations. So, what we are looking at is to see whether this R 1 minus R 1 s, this R 1 minus R 1 s which appears in both the material balance and the energy balance, whether we can look at this difference R 1 minus R 1 s uh, by looking at the Taylor series expansion of this term R 1 minus R 1 s, keeping in mind that the deviation x minus of x s and t minus of t s is not very large. In other words, what we are trying to say is that we can get an understanding of the stability of the system by doing uh, small perturbations from the steady state. If the perturbations are very large, our mathematics may not be satisfactory, we may have to do a numerical procedure to handle all these. But for small disturbance from steady state, that means when x minus of x s is small, t minus t s is small we can expand R 1 minus of R 1 s in Taylor series and get a linear approximation to the problem. The advantage of this procedure is that we can get answers to our stability questions without having to solve the nonlinear problems. Okay. That is a big advantage. Of course, how small is small when you say x minus x s is small or t minus t s is small, the question of how small is small still remains is something that we will learn only when we deal with actual situations to make a distinction between small and how small is small. So, now what we want to do is that we want to do a what is called as a linear stability analysis. By linear we mean we will linearize this function r 1 about r 1 s and then see what is the best estimate of r 1 minus of r 1 s we can get. So, that we can get an approximation to what happens to this unsteady state problem. So, let us expand for example, expanding by Taylor series expanding R 1 at x t by Taylor series. So, we say R, R of x t equal to R of x s T s plus x minus of x s del r by del x at s plus t minus of T s del r by del t at s. Okay, this is the first order terms. Second order terms are x minus of x s whole squared by factorial 2 del squared r by del x squared. Okay. Now, then we come x minus of x s t minus of t s divided by factorial 1 factorial 1 okay. del squared r divided by del x del t plus t minus of t s whole squared del squared r by del t squared. So, this is an expansion that we all have studied in early school. So, there is nothing new about this. If you have a function x t, we can expand it this way. And so, that if the second order terms or all these terms are uh, you know very small, then we can delete these terms assuming they are small. So, that our expansion of x x t versus uh, about x s t s only involves x minus of x s and t minus of t s and therefore, it is linear in x minus x s and t minus of t s. What is del r del x at steady state or del r del t at steady state? Since the rate function is known del r del x s del r del t s is also known at the steady state point. Therefore, all these can be calculated. Having said this, let us see how we can. So, what we are saying now is, so we have r of x t equal to r of x s t s plus you have x minus x s del r del x at s then you have t minus of t s del r del t. 
at s. Okay. All right. So, therefore, R 1 x t minus of R 1 s x t s x s t s is simply x minus of x s del r del x at s plus t minus of t s del r del t at s. So, what we have found here is that by Taylor's series expansion, the difference between r x t and r 1 x s t s is given by this linear relationship, which is simply x minus x s multiplied by the rate of change in that direction. So, now we can substitute, we can substitute for r 1 minus of r 1 s in our equations. So, we have here we notice here that our steady state equation the deviations from steady states are given by two equations 6 and 7, where r 1 minus of r, r, r 1 s is occurring. Therefore, using this relationship that you have derived just now that r of x t minus of r 1 r 1 at x s t s is given by this relationship x s minus of x minus x s times del r del x plus t minus t s del r del t. So, we can use that and take it forward. So, let us put these. So, our equations d by d t of x minus of x s divided by d t equal to minus of x minus of x s plus you have r minus that is x minus of x s del r del x at s plus t minus of t s del r del t at s. Okay. What have we got here? x minus of x s del r del x is what is the term that is coming here. So, r 1 minus of r 1 s. So, on the right hand side we have r 1 minus of r 1 s is to be replaced by this equation x minus of x s del r del x t minus of t del r del t. Now, if I denote x minus of x s as small x. So, the left hand side becomes d x d t. Okay. There is a tau here which I have forgotten I will put it again now that is equal to first term is minus of x. The second term is what plus x del r del x at s then plus y del r del t. Okay. And what is our equation? What is our equation here? Our equation is r 1 minus is multiplied by tau by c a 0. So, we will have to multiply r 1 minus r 1 s r 1 minus this whole term should be multiplied by by tau by c a 0. So, this also we should multiply by tau by c a 0. I hope we understand what I am saying. Let us just go through this once again, so that there is no confusion. What we have done? We have expressed in the form of a differential equation x minus of x s and t minus of t s. The right hand side they involve a term r 1 minus of r 1 s in both material balance and energy balance. Then we said that r 1 minus of r 1 s this can be understood from looking at the Taylor series expansion for function r times x r x which we have done here. So, this gives us r x t minus of r 1 x s t s. Therefore, that difference between r 1 and r 1 s it is given by this relationship x minus x s del r del x and x t minus t s del r del t. Okay. So, we have to substitute for that here. Therefore, r 1 minus of r 1 s has to be multiplied by uh, tau by j c s. So, this is what we have done here. Okay. So, our relationship for the variation of x with time is given by this relationship, which involves all the terms that we have talked about. Okay. Now, let us do the same thing energy balance. What is our energy balance? So, we are doing the same thing for our energy balance. So, we say tau, where are we? So, equation 7 is our energy balance. So, which I am writing it as T minus of T s, let us say is y. So, becomes d by d t of y equal to 1 plus beta t minus of t s is y plus which is r 1 minus of r 1 s. Let me write it down uh, in the form in which we want, which is uh, within brackets of 
x minus of x which is small x del r del x at s plus y t minus del r del t at s. Okay. Is that clear? So, our our balance now looks like so this is r 1 minus of r 1 s you have to multiply it by tau times j 1. So, we have two equations now. So, we have we have the material balance equation giving you tau d x d t equal to on the right hand side and you have the energy balance equation giving you an equation of the form d by d t of 1 plus 1 plus beta and so on and then 1 plus beta must have a negative sign. Okay, I have forgotten the negative sign. Okay. All right. So, so we have these two equations tau d x d t equal to this and d by d t tau is missing here, tau also is missing here. Okay. Now, we can put this in a in a nice form. The nice form is taken from Rutherford Aris's book, and the forms in which these equations are available, I will write the final forms because these are not very difficult to do. These are all available in this form in the lit. So, what we are saying is that the differential equations that is with us to be solved in the literature, it is available in terms of L, M, and N where L is defined like this, M is defined like this, N is defined like this. So, that our equation tau d x d t can be written like this and y divided by j 1 c a 0 and tau d y d t equal to minus of y times m minus of n plus j 1 c a 0 1 minus of l times x. So, I mean you might ask how I got this, this is some very elementary manipulation you have to put all these things in terms of l m and n in and simplify these two equations and it is nothing very complicated it will come very nicely. So, what are we saying? What we are saying now is that x and y represent the deviation from steady state and then this differential equation, I will call it equation 7, 8, 9, 10, let us say it is 9, 10. This equations 9 and 10 describe how x and y change with time as the process is disturbed because of some external uh, disturbances. So, our, our interest is now to solve this. Of course, this can be solved numerically, so that is not a big problem, but we can get answers to this by looking at the, uh, the matrix of the variations that we have talked about. Let us do that now. So, let us represent this equation tau within brackets of x dot and y dot. What is x dot and y dot? x dot is d x by d t, y dot is d y by d t, x represents deviation in uh, conversion, y represents deviation in temperature with respect to steady state. So, in this form we can write our matrix which is x and y. So, this matrix looks like this. So, it is minus of L n by j 1 c a 0 j 1 c a 0 times 1 minus of L m minus of n. So, this is fairly straightforward there is nothing much in it. So, this is just written in the matrix form that is all x dot y dot represent d y d t and d x d t and then x and y taking common and all that you will get what you are saying. Okay. Now, if you have a matrix a differential equation where the coefficient matrix here consists of terms which are constant. So, the coefficients l m and n they are all constants therefore, this coefficient matrix tells us something about the system which is undergoing a transient change. The, the linear stability theory says linear stability theory states that if 
coefficient coefficient matrix has negative eigen values has negative eigen values then the disturbance the disturbance as measured by x dot and y dot will slowly decrease and ultimately become 0. What are we saying? What we are saying is that if the Eigen values are negative, then the disturbance x dot x and y will slowly die and eventually it will reach the previous steady state from where it started. Okay. Now, how do you impose the condition that these values of the, the Eigen values are negative? Suppose you want to make the Eigen values negative, that means what is the condition that we can impose? The condition that we can impose is that if you have a matrix which is minus of L n by j 1 c a 0, j 1 c a 0 times 1 minus of L m minus of n, this matrix matrix must have negative eigenvalues. Okay. How do you find that means, well, how do you find the eigenvalues of a matrix a minus of lambda i equal to 0? that determinant tells you the. So, you have to find the determinant, I will say determinant of minus of L minus of lambda n by j 1 c a 0 m minus of n minus of lambda. So, this determinant but goes to 0. So, this must be equal to 0. Then these eigenvalues, these eigenvalues should become negative or if it is complex the real part must be negative. If that is the case then the disturbance that is measured by x dot and y dot tend to uh, become smaller and smaller and in, in long periods of time completely disappear. Okay. So, our criteria for stability of our steady state is that eigenvalues of this matrix must be negative. Okay. Eigenvalues of this matrix must be negative. So, how do we what how do you impose that condition on this uh, matrix? The condition we impose on this matrix is that the determinant must have negative uh, eigenvalues. So, let us find the determinant. So, you have minus of lambda. So, we have I am writing the determinant please see if it is ok. So, minus of L minus of lambda multiplied by m minus of n minus of lambda okay, equal to n by sorry minus j 1 c a 0 j 1 c a 0 divided by 1 minus of l this must be equal to determinant must be equal to 0. What are we saying? To find the eigenvalues we will have to say a minus of lambda i equal to 0 that is what we have done. So, that a minus of lambda i equal to 0 specifies that this uh, this characteristic equation this is the characteristic equation characteristic equation equation must be 0. So, this tells us what are the values of lambda. Okay. Let us solve this. So, when you solve this let me write down minus of l n plus l m plus l lambda minus of lambda n plus lambda m plus lambda squared minus of n plus l n equal to 0. Okay. I've, this is there is a minus sign here which I did not notice. Okay. It is minus minus lambda. Okay. So, it is so, minus m plus n that is why okay, fine fine. See I I put it on the numerator it is 1 minus of m I am sorry I am sorry that is why okay. j 1 c a 0 1 minus of l divided by 
uh, n by j 1 c 1 c that is ok ok that is that is better now ok. So, this is correct. So, we can simplify this and write this as our characteristic equation looks like this lambda squared plus lambda times L plus m minus of n plus within brackets L m minus of n equal to 0 L m minus of is it correct L m minus of n L n oh, some terms cancel so correct. So, lambda squared, so this is correct lambda squared L m L m minus of n this term is taken. Okay. Now, lambda times L lambda, so this term is taken minus of lambda n this sorry this term is taken this term is taken and then uh, L lambda m this term is taken. Okay. So, all the terms are taken. So, only term this these two cancels off. Okay, this is fine. Therefore, solution is minus L m L plus m minus of n minus b plus or minus of root of L plus m minus of n whole squared minus of 4 times L m minus of n divided by 2. So, this is the uh, eigenvalue and we must put the condition that these eigenvalues are negative. Okay. Now, if it turn out to be complex, the real part must be negative. So, this is the condition that we must impose and then it stands to reason simply to recognize that L plus m minus of n must be greater than 0 and L m minus of n greater than 0. So, for lambda negative. Let us just understand whether this is satisfactory from our first principles. We want lambda to be negative. When will lambda to bar by be negative? The left hand side L plus m minus of n must be greater than 0. So, that this term is always negative and the term inside L plus m minus of n. So, this must be L plus m minus of n must be this this whole thing has to be uh, such that uh, you see if you make L m minus of n greater than 0. So, if this is greater than 0 you find that this whole term becomes less than L plus m minus of n. Therefore, all the both the roots become negative this is what uh, you have to recognize. We want both the roots to be negative. So, this nice condition L plus m minus of n is greater than 0 L m minus n greater than 0. So, there could be a situation when the second term is very large compared to the first one. So, that the whole term becomes what is called as complex. So, moment becomes imaginary the second term which means what the real term eigenvalues real part is negative, but it has a complex part which only means there is a an oscillation involved in the process. Now, just, just quickly look at what we are saying. What are we saying? What we are saying is we have time or x or y let us say. Okay. So, this is an instance when lambda 1 and lambda 2 are negative. Okay. So, when lambda 1 and lambda 2 are both negative what you find is that this both x and y this is 0. So, it starts at some value it starts to decay and it takes certain amount of time to become 0. Okay. Now, this can this can also be like this okay. or this can also be like this. So, A B C. So, this instance of A B C are three types of values of lambda 1 and lambda 2, but such that they are all the because lambda 1 and lambda 2 are negative. The, the deviation x and y goes to 0 in, in various ways, okay. but these are all instances of stable steady state because both x and y become 0 uh, in infinite time that is the meaning of uh, asymptotic stability. Okay. So, there could be instances where you know it sort of runs away. So, this E and F 
our values of lambda, lambda 1 and lambda 2 uh, positive or positive. Okay. So, this is E and F, E and F when lambda 1 lambda 2 are positive the, the process runs away which means that there are instances of unstable situation that means when there is a disturbance under conditions of E and F it does not return to the same steady state therefore, instances there are unstable. Okay. Let us look at one more instance what is that instance is when the lambda has a complex that means, lambdas are complex which means that there is a real part, but there is an imaginary part as a result of which there is oscillation. So, there are two types of oscillations. So, time x and y what we are saying is that the there is negative real part, but there is oscillation which means what you have that means it oscillates yes, but because the the lambda is negative real lambda 1 and lambda 2 are negative negative okay, real part is negative real. So, that the complex part starts to decay. So, there is one more instance which we will see that is you have lambda 1 lambda 2 uh, are 0 the real part is 0 okay. real part is 0 and then the imaginary the, the other part is complex showing that you see you can have what is called as a stable oscillations. It is a stable oscillation when the uh, real part is 0, but there is a complex part which means it is stable oscillations. Okay. So, a stable oscillation can be seen as uh, a steady as long as the oscillations are within the limits that you would specify. Okay. So, what we have done is that we have formulated the problem in terms of deviations from steady state. We have looked at how to make these deviations uh, the eigenvalues of this matrix uh, should be negative real we put the conditions for that. We said the conditions are L plus m minus of n greater than 0 L m minus n equal to greater than 0. If these two conditions are satisfied the uh, steady state is stable provided the lambdas have negative real part. Okay. Now, there is another way by which we can look at all this. Let us do this quickly. So, what we are saying is that let us just write down the equation once again. Our equation is d x d t equal to minus of x plus r 1 minus of r 1 s tau by c 0 tau d y d t to minus of 1 plus beta plus r 1 minus of r 1 s multiplied by tau j 1 by j 1. Okay. Is that clear? We want to understand stability in the context of a process. Now, in a process our variables x which is deviation from steady state, variable y which is deviation from steady state in temperature all these will change. It will not be at the steady state that you and I have specified. Therefore, when you run a process we accept certain variations. Now, within the limits if these variations are within limits that we specify we are still willing to accept. Okay. So, suppose I say that a q equal to x by x s comma y by t s. Okay. Suppose I define a quadratic form, which is x by x s, uh, comma y by s multiplied by this this uh, vector. So, or what we are saying is that x squared by x s squared and y squared by t s squared equal to some number. Suppose I say that as long as this q is within my limits, I am willing to accept the process. Suppose we do that. What it means? What it means is that if I expand this q equal to x squared by q x s squared plus y squared by q t s squared equal to 1. So, if I put this in this form that means, I can represent suppose I say that in my process 
I am willing to accept q as the uh, as the value of the uh, objective. What is that objective? That x by x s comma y by t s this uh, quadratic form should be equal to q at best or expressed in this form this ellipse x, this is the equation to an ellipse. Suppose, I make a plot I make a plot of uh, y and x. Okay. So, I get an ellipse and this is the, uh, the uh, point of steady state as long as my x and y stay within this ellipse I am willing to accept the process. So, in other words what we are trying to say by looking at the stability analysis of an exothermic stirred tank is that x and y will change it will change depending upon how well we run the process, but if you define a quadratic form and if we can run the process within that uh, ellipse we are willing to accept and say that it is a stable process we are willing to accept whatever variations and this is one way of trying to run a process because it is very difficult to keep the values of x and y at the points where we would like it to be. Thank you very much.